The warning came from an Iraqi colonel called al Daba, an artillery commander in Iraq's western desert. What was the intelligence? That they are ready to, to, to within 45 minutes, to hit any defection, any unit that will defect. With what? With chemical weapons. Did Colonel al Daba say that he'd seen the weapons? No. In fact, Colonel al Daba simply assumed the sealed boxes delivered to his unit contained chemical or biological agents, and they'd just be short-range weapons for use on the battlefield. Was it clear from the intelligence from Colonel al Daba that the 45 minutes was referring to battlefield weapons? To me, it was clear, yes. The intelligence was then passed from Colonel al Daba to his relative, Brigadier General Muhi, a senior officer in Saddam's military. We contacted him, but he didn't want to talk. General Muhi then passed it to the INA. When you got the information about the 45 minutes, yeah. did you pass that information on to MI6? I think it was passed by one of our officers. To MI6? Yes. By the time it got to London, the intelligence was third hand. Unusually, MI6 did not say the 45 minute warning came from an opposition group, albeit a trusted one, but simply said it came from a reliable source. CIA director George Tenet was less than flattering about Britain's 45 minute claim. Reportedly, he referred to it as that 45 minute shit. The 45 minutes intelligence prompted serious concern at the MOD's defense intelligence staff. Their experts thought it vague and ambiguous. It referred very generally to chemical and biological weapons, which immediately suggested that, that, that um, whoever was providing the material didn't have a detailed understanding. The first government inquiry into the use of intelligence was chaired by Lord Butler. He singled out the 45-minute warning as being one of the most misleading intelligence failings, since it implied Iraq was a serious and current threat to the UK. It was interpreted as referring to missiles that you could fire at uh, Cyprus, and that did make it sensational. Now, that misunderstanding, I think, was due to a bit of a sloppy bit of use of intelligence. But unusual, because for the most part, the intelligence was handled very professionally. But um, in this case, it was left vague. What's more, although MI6 knew that the 45-minute claim referred to short-range battlefield weapons and not long-range missiles, this critical distinction was never mentioned in their intelligence report or in the government's dossier. Indeed, the MI6 chief, Sir Richard Dearlove, admits he knew that it only referred to battlefield weapons. But MI6 never told the Prime Minister or ever mentioned it in the dossier. I think it was a serious uh, mission because it misled a lot of uh, people. So I think one can say that it was a serious uh, error in the uh, dossier. But there were still more errors to come. Just 12 days before the dossier was published, Sir Richard Dearlove took personal charge of the other two pieces of new intelligence and drove to Downing Street to brief the Prime Minister. For the first time, MI6 had a spy who claimed to have direct access to the production of chemical and biological agents. He became known as the new source on trial. Sir Richard called it a significant breakthrough. Although the source was not quoted in the dossier, the intelligence was seized upon as confirmation that Saddam had active WMD. It was an exciting event, last minute, I mean, rather like sort of stop press news in a newspaper. <laughs> and so people did act, I think, with undue haste. Giving evidence to the Chilcot inquiry, some MI6 officers were highly skeptical of the new source on trial. 
it was... Being torn off the teleprinter and rushed across to number 10 with a little more haste than was probably appropriate. Another said it was... Wishful thinking, which promised the crock of gold at the end of the rainbow. Why wasn't it shown to the defence intelligence staff who could have made a proper assessment of it? Because it was thought dangerous uh, that uh, here was a new source on trial and uh, if it was compromised in any way, the source might be lost. I found it quite difficult to believe that there could exist a single piece of intelligence um, in which there could be such great confidence. And this made me suspicious about, uh, about it and about what was going on. I think it was a serious mistake that it wasn't shown to the analyst's intelligence. It ought always to be shown to the people who can analyse its uh, validity. Sir Richard Dilav also told Tony Blair of more dramatic new intelligence. It seemed to corroborate Curveball's claims of mobile biological labs. I was told and specifically briefed about these mobile production facilities for biological weapons. So this was an additional and new factor. The MI6 chief said one of their trusted spies, codenamed Red River, had heard that Iraq had developed biological fermenters to be carried on lorries or railway trucks. The problem was, it was hearsay. Red River was basing this on what he'd been told by someone else whom MI6 had never met. What's more, that someone else had never actually claimed the fermenters had any connection with biological weapons. This really didn't substantiate Curveball's information, but it was complementary to it. What this illustrates is that you must always subject those reports to the technical experts. We asked Sir Richard Dearlove to comment, but he said he could not ahead of the forthcoming Chilcot report. General Sir Mike Jackson was Britain's senior soldier when troops were sent to fight a war allegedly justified by this intelligence. What I do know is intelligence sources do not always tell the truth. What appeared to be gold in terms of intelligence turned out to be fool's gold because it looked like gold, but it wasn't. When the eagerly awaited dossier was finally published, the Prime Minister lost no time in telling Parliament that the intelligence case had been established beyond doubt. His weapons of mass destruction programme is active, detailed and growing. The trouble was that the intelligence was never that certain, as defence analysts felt at the time. We had not seen evidence that established that beyond doubt and that it concerned us. The weapons of mass destruction program is not shut down. It is up and running now. It was just guessing that there could be residual stocks and some resumption of activities. It concludes that Iraq has chemical and biological weapons, that Saddam has continued to produce them. There was a consistent effort to find intelligence that supported preconceived positions and desires. He has existing and active military plans for the use of chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes. Now, that was a, a surprising um, statement uh, to us in the military. What was your reaction? Extremely surprised. We were really quite dismissive of that intelligence and thought that it was quite transparently weak. What was your reaction to the 45-minute claim? We haven't had such kind of information. The intelligence picture they paint is one accumulated over the last four years. It is extensive, detailed and authoritative. In fact, the original intelligence that was given to the Prime Minister was clearly qualified. It said, Intelligence remains limited, is sporadic and patchy. 
the crucial qualifications to the intelligence were totally absent from the government's dossier in order to make a convincing case to the public and to Parliament. It seems the government wanted to leave little room for doubt. The qualifications should have been there because I think that in a sense this was the mistake the dossier led people to believe that because it was intelligence it was uniquely worthy of belief there was other intelligence from human and technical sources eavesdropping and intercepts but they painted a less alarming picture Blair's critics have accused him of deliberately sexing up the dossier by omitting these qualifications and including flaky intelligence. Was Tony Blair a liar? No, I don't believe he was a liar. I, I believe that uh, when, he, when he said uh, what he believed about uh, Saddam Hussein, he was speaking the truth. Uh, but I think um, because the qualifications on the evidence weren't uh, made clear, I think he oversold the case. But that's the reason why there are so many people today who feel outraged still today that they were misled by the Prime Minister. Yes, but I think one could say in the Prime Minister's defence that he'd misled himself. He'd, 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 and indeed the intelligence community had misled themselves. When the dossier was published, the invasion was just six months away. America's war machine was waiting for the signal to go. And now the Bush administration was determined to use curveball to clinch the case for war. The CIA was more anxious than ever to meet him face to face. At a chic Washington restaurant, Tyler Drumheller pressed his contact in German intelligence for access to curveball. He and I were good friends, so we had a lot to talk about. And at the end, I said, oh, by the way, they asked me to ask you about this curveball case. Is there any way they can get access to him because it's really important? And he said, don't ask. They're not going to give you access to him. And I said, oh, OK. And he said, look, because this is a source we don't have any corroboration for it. He said, and I'll tell you off the record that I think personally, he says, I, I dealt with this case. I believe personally that he's, he may be a fabricator. The CIA director says Drumheller failed to pass this and other warnings on. Just before Christmas 2002, the head of German intelligence, August Hanning, sent a personal cable to CIA director George Tenet, warning about the intelligence from Curveball. It is not confirmed. Please be cautious to use this kind of not confirmed information. And, of course, he was a single source. He was a single source. We told them. Did you do enough to warn the Americans, to warn the CIA about curveball? Yeah. But they, they were not in a state of, uh, or in a mindset to be warned. The CIA says Hanning's cable never left Drumheller's office. George Tennant says he never got that yeah. cable from the head of the but BND. But he says he didn't. Well, he did. He I tell you, he did. You suggesting he's so you lying? So you put my word against George Tennant. That's a, oh, I won't oh. say he lied because I don't. But I just say I know George Tennant. How do you know George Tennant? Because I sent it to him. We sent it to him. Well, apparently there are other senior officers uh, who don't have any specific recollection of these eleventh-hour warnings that came from Tyler Drumheller. I have complete faith in the integrity both of George Tennant and of John McLaughlin, his deputy. George Tennant says that he never got your cable. It was uh, addressed to him personally himself, to, uh, to him. I, I have no explanation for it. Do you believe George Tennant? I've always believed that my colleagues. By the turn of the year, no one in the White House or Downing Street doubted that war was imminent.